this is my presentation war stories from the work floor. As a short introduction uh, for the one for the people who haven't seen my previous talk. I'm Steven Hartog. I've been working at Bol.com for a little over three and a half years. I've been working for two and a half years in our webshop as a backend developer. Uh, my hobbies are following critical production issues and trying to prevent them. Uh, in my opinion, or in a lot of people's opinion, the best way is to learn. The, the best way to learn is from your mistakes. And in my opinion, the second best way to learn is from other people's mistakes. So I try to follow as much of the crap that's going on as possible. And today's talk is sharing some of the mistakes that have been made and hoping that you can learn from them as well. I have three stories of today, and the first story is the story of Detective Stephen and the mystery of the disappearing notes. So, a small introduction. Um, the web shop uh, that I develop in is a really large Java application that spits out HTML that we serve to our customers. And we also uh, aggregate more than 80 microservices. And each instance of our Java application is what we refer to as a page server. The story begins on Friday afternoon on the 8th of June, 2018. Um, you know, weather is sunny outside, it's Friday, so people, you know, just start taking it a little bit relaxed and um, people are having drinks outside already. This is personally one of my favorite times to, to actually work because between four and five, nobody is going to bother you on a Friday. And suddenly alerts, you know, just start popping in. Always, you know, Friday afternoon alerts, always a great co combination. So uh, we're getting alerts that page servers are f going down. You know, the Java applications just <laughs> disappear. So, you know, this is a pretty big problem. What do you do when you have a big problem? You open up Kibana, you go to the error logging, and you check, you know, they're going down. There must be some error, log error logs, you know, like something is going wrong. And there were no error logs. You know, everything looked absolutely normal. So what do you do as a developer? Well, you open up random graphs, you know. So you start opening random, opening random graphs. And then I came to the garbage collection graphs. Now, as garbage collection is something that a lot of people are familiar with, I'm just going to do a really small introduction to them. Uh, a Java application, uh, in a Java application, everything uses memory. Uh, whenever you assign, a, uh, create a new object, assign a variable, etc., uh, and this memory has to uh, be ref uh, uh, re cleared once in a while. So the memory just builds up, builds up, and then every uh, once in a while, there's a garbage collection which removes all the memory that's no longer in use from the application, and then that memory is freed up and can be reused again. If you have no memory left, well, you basically cannot do anything in a Java application. So a normal garbage collection graph would look like this. So there is a line that's slowly you know, going up, going down, going up, going down. When it goes down, that's a garbage collect collection. There's two lines here that are important. The first is the, well, for the, for the non-colorblind people, the red line of doom at the very top is the part where the application runs out of memory. The green line is where you start garbage collecting. I know it reaches the green line, then it goes down again. So sometimes you have a memory leak. What happens in a memory leak is that um, when after a garbage collect, not enough memory is cleared up and the memory is built up slowly. You know, the, the graph just keeps going up until it reaches the line of doom and then you have a really big problem. And this is what we were seeing on production. So it was just going as normal and then suddenly it shut up really quickly, went to the line of doom. The application died for about a full minute and then it just, went on business as usual. Very weird. So now I had an instance, you know, I had a time point where the graph was, um, uh, where a graph was reaching the wrong line. I knew which instance was going down. So I could zoom in on the full logging, you know, not only error logging, just also warning and info logging. And then I found the log line that saved me. An absolute legend added this. Warning, we're fetching more than 500 products. We're actually trying to fetch 2,600 products. And here's the first 10 of them. To explain what's going on, I have to you know, explain a little bit of, about products. Uh, we sell a lot of products on ball.com 
uh, products can belong to families and a family of products is, is products that uh, have those are really similar but they just have a little bit of a different feature so for example here i have a, a, an example of an east pack bag and all the east pack bags are identical apart from that they have a different color so we have one pretty big family of east pack bags and at some point someone had written a really useful optimization you know if we're fetching a product we're also going to fetch all the family members of that product because we're probably going to need them now somehow there had appeared a product with more than 6,000 family members so every time we fetched one of these products we would all load also all the other 6,000 of them into our memory and this caused so much memory issues that immediately the Java application just went down because it had to do a full garbage collect. So luckily, which is, you know, you're never sure when the drinks have started on Friday, someone was still working. So I, I was able to contact him um, and he, he ran some scripts or something, you know, broke up the family and the products and, and the issue was solved. And what we later heard is that um, this was actually a mistake. Families were never supposed to be larger than 50. Um, by the normal way of creating families, you couldn't. But by doing some hacky scripts that you know circumvented all of the fail safes, someone had managed to create a way too large uh, family. So you know, of course, you have to prevent yourself from this happening again. Um, so this is the real fix that we made. Every time we fetch more than 300 products. We just say, yeah, go screw yourself. We're just fetching the first 300. I don't care what you want me to do because otherwise our application just cannot keep up. So a little bit of an epilogue. This is our real, um, this is our, our fix. Large families are still really slow. You know, fetching 300 products, that takes a while because we also have to fetch all their images. We have to fetch you know, their offers. We have, we have to fetch the deals, etc. But more importantly, why did this warning message, you know, why was it in our application to begin with? This had happened before, except the last time it took down the entire product service. The next story is Detective Stephen and the Phantom Texts. So, a little, I first have to explain a little bit of architecture. Um, our web shop uh, used to have an old content management system, CA, and this wrote stuff into an, a database called LVA. Um, and at some point we decided we didn't want to read from the database uh, by ourselves. So we wrote uh, a service in front of it called slot service. And this was just a wrapper around the database. So th the incident happened at 10 o'clock on Thir the 13th of April 2019. There was routine maintenance in our data center and an engineer made a mistake. He just switched off the database and suddenly the database was gone. Oh, we actually uh, were quite lucky because almost all of the calls that were going to slot service had a one hour cache. So we were safe for an hour. And then time runs out because the pro the issue actually took more than an hour or it took an hour to solve. So suddenly, so the caches slowly started emptying and more and more stuff started, you know, disappearing from our website. And one of the most frustrating things was that um, the, uh, we have a lot of interface texts, you know, stuff, stuff that's in a search bar, stuff that's in a buy button, stuff that is explaining stuff about a day deal. You know, all, all those texts, yeah, we stored those in the LVA database and we get them from the slot service. So all of those were disappearing from our site. But even more than that, uh, certain um, pages were stored in the database as well. For example, the customer service page. So the customer service page suddenly disappeared from our website. You know. Not great. So we realized our resilience is lacking. You know, it, it had been fixed in an hour, but this wasn't, you know, evening, peak hours probably. So I decided to make a new caching mechanism. Uh, I, I made a loading cache um, and it would automatically update itself every five minutes. And if the service we were going to was down, we would just fall back to the last correct value. And then you run, and then you no longer have the issue that you run out of time because if the service goes down, you just keep all the last values that were there 
just return us. And I swore that these texts on our website were never going to break again. I had to build an absolutely foolproof mechanism. But sadly, this is a three-parter because then came the revenge of the phantom texts. This happened uh, um, three months later, um, of a little bit after four, everybody was still in the office and the texts disappeared. And even worse, they disappeared after five minutes instead of after one hour. And we had no idea what was going on. I had built the foolproof cache. How could this happen? So we were looking and we did understand what was going on because for almost all of these things, we had resiliency. But the crazy thing is, last time this had happened, our customer service pages were just going down. They were showing like a billion on the carpet, which is how we refer to our error page. But this time, the pages were still showing up, but they were completely empty. And we didn't understand what was going on. Slot was completely healthy. It was not returning error codes or anything. The database was pretty healthy. It was not, there were no database issues. But the unbreakable, the unbreakable still broke. And we were just, I was just, while this was going on, I was just going through our code, checking the resiliency over and over and over again. And I could not see any way why it was not breaking. But the problem was that the slot service didn't return an error status. And everything we had built was based on error statuses or timeouts or whatever. Instead, every call was just returning a 200 error status or 200 status code. So what had actually happened is that some freak accident had happened where someone had clicked on the wrong button and something had happened at the same time. And all the tables that contained values, not even the definitions of like what kind of pages we had, but all the values were completely cleared out. So this means that we, we were getting 200 status codes. We we're getting full responses and all the fields in them were empty. So we were just still getting texts, but all the texts were just empty. And all of our full books had been built on these hours. And this was actually pretty disastrous because it took us more than two hours to fully fix this issue. Um, luckily, there was a mechanism where there was not only LVA, but there was also LVB, which was the same as LVA, except that it was no longer in use, just that it was a backup database. So we switched to the backup database, but then we, of course, we found out that it didn't work. So that took us quite a long time to fix it. But luckily, eventually we, we recovered. So afterwards, we took a look at this issue and we thought, well, how can we prevent this from happening? And we just looked and we looked and we looked and we were coming up with all these crazy ideas like that. Let's inspect all the values that we're returning, you know, and, and if, the, if the list is empty, then we're not going to put it into our cache. And the more we thought about it, the more we realized, you know, how can we be resilient to this? It's impossible to be resilient to this because the resiliency measures that we're going to build in place are all just going to be absolutely horrible. So in the end, we just didn't do anything. And we just hope that next time when a service is going down, they will just give us 500 error status codes. So I hope you enjoyed these stories. I hope you learned something from them. And my main takeaway is trust nobody, not even yourself. But at some point it has to end. So this is the end of my talk. I hope you enjoyed it.